Good morning again. Like I said, on behalf of the esteemed volunteers, board of directors, and various advisory board members of the African Caribbean Council of Halton, I welcome all of you um, to this historic celebration and proclamation of the Black History Month in the town of Milton. I help, I'm your host for today. My name is Edosa Adam Sidode. I am one of the community advocates and I sit on the board of the ACCH. Um, thank you all for joining us today and uh, good morning again to all of our guests, our, our residents, our dignitaries and, and even, even <laughs> guests who logged in from outside um, Canada, you're, you're warmly welcome to this uh, historic moment. And we're going to start off, um, it's 10.02 with our national item. And then um, we, will, we will move through the agenda um, as time permits uh, in an orderly fashion. So over to our digital team for the Canadian national item. You can stand up or you can sit down if you choose to. Thank you. All Canada, please. <laughs> Thank you, be praised for the rendition of our national item. Um, we're go at ACCH, we do acknowledge the lands that we sit on and part of our tradition at ACCH is to um, have the land acknowledgement. Um, so for the land acknowledgement in English, we're going to have uh, a young uh, graduate and aspiring law student, Mr. Emmanuel Okorafor, who uh -huh. is um, also the d digital lead for the uh, African Caribbean Council of Halting. And he, he has, he's just a recent recipient of the CMP award for 2021. Next, um, reading the land acknowledgement in French is a young volunteer and grade 11 student of Bishop Reading Catholic School in Milton, Mr. Oshoboge Idode. So over to you, Emmanuel. Um, for the land acknowledgement, and the next voice you hear is Mr. Oshobuge Dode. Thank you. Halton, as we know it today, is rich in history and modern tradition of many First Nation and the Métis, from the Anishinaabe to the Athawandaran, the Haudenosaunee, and the Métis. These lands surrounding the Great Lakes are steeped in Indigenous history. As we gather today on these treaty lands, we have the res responsibility to honor and respect the four directions, land, water, plants, animals, ancestors that walked before us and all the wonderful elements of creation that exist. We would like to acknowledge and thank the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation for sharing their land and tradition territory with us. Halton tell que nous la connaissons aujourd'hui est riche de l'histoire et des traditions Maldown, the nombreuses Premier Nation et Métis. Des Anishinaabe aux Adirondacks, en passant par les Adirondacks et les Métis, ces terres entourant les grands lacs sont ancrées dans l'histoire autochtone alors que nous nous réunissons aujourd'hui aujourd sur ces terres de traité. Nous avons la responsabilité d'honorer et de respecter les quatre directions la terre, les eaux, les plantes, les animaux, les ancêtres qui ont marché avant nous et tous les merveilleux éléments de la création qui existent. Nous tenons à reconnaître et à remercier 
la première nation Mississauga of the Credit d'avoir partagé son territoire traditionnel avec nous. Thank you so much, Mr. Imana Lukura for and uh, Mr. Oshobugu. It's order for acknowledging the four elements of the land uh, to which we have the privilege to sit on today and uh, have um, this historic um, occasion. Um, once again, I would um, welcome everyone to the proclamation of Black History Month for the town of Milton, Ontario, in Canada. Um, the next speaker for today, as you can see from our program, uh, is a visionary and a tenacious lady who has inspired a lot of youths in our community. She is no other than the founder of the African Caribbean Council of Halton, as well as many other non-for-profit organizations. Please join me to welcome virtually to this virtual stage, Lady Abba, Mrs. Ms. Adejisola Atiba. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hedosa. Welcome, everybody. Um, there is no power for change greater than a community discovering what it cares about. This is a quote by Margaret Whitley. What do you care about? Happy New Month. Happy Black History Month. Welcome to the third Black History Month proclamation in the town of Milton. My name is Adeji Sola Atiba. I am the daughter of Aulat, the daughter of Oida Mola, the daughter of Adekweju. I'd like to take you on a journey through history. The very first Black History Month in the town of Milton was made possible by his worship, Mayor Gordon Kranz and MP Adam Van Kuberden in February 2020. We had it in person at the town hall, at the town hall. Having an in-person event since has become a luxury. Little did we know that COVID-19 was practically knocking on our doors. And then the unfortunate death of Judge Floyd created an outcry worldwide. May his soul and all the souls of the departed rest in peace. I dare say since then, we have seen significant changes but we cannot stop there because there is still so much to be done. That is why African Caribbean Council of Alton and many more organizations like it continues to advocate for change. We, can, we cannot continue to keep quiet and expect change to happen. According to a very wise saying, we're not where we ought to be, but thank God we're not where we used to be. Black History Month is not about checking off a box. It is not about having a token as a means of representation. It's about treating everyone equitably. We have seen that there is a measurable strength in our diversity. My ask of everyone is to look within. Are you equitable in your dealings on treating everyone equal, equally? Equality would be the right thing if we all started on a level playing field. We did not. So care needs to be taken and given to our community in all dealings with us. I will end my speech with this, a reminder about the International Decade of People of African Descent 2015 to 2024. As proclaimed by the General Assembly at the United Nations, the team for the International Decade is People of African Descent, Recognition, Justice and Development. In proclaiming this decade, the international community is recognizing that people of African descent represent a distinct group whose human rights must be promoted and protected. Around 200 million people identify themselves as being of African descent lives in the Americas. Many millions more live in other parts of the world outside of the African continent. I ask you to look within. What have I personally done to uphold and support the decade? Without further ado, I'd like to introduce a friend of our community, the longest serving mayor. Mayor Gordon Krenz has been serving the Milton community continuously since 1960. In 2010, Mayor Krenz celebrated 50 years of continuous service with the corporation of the town of Milton. And on December 1st, 2020, he celebrated 40 years as the mayor of the town of Milton. He has been an essential contributor to the region of Alton his growth plans by serving on regional municipal of Alton Town Council since 1980 and many more. 
It has shaped Milton's future with significant projects, such as the restoration of the town hall facility and many more. A lifelong resident of Milton, Gordon's personal experience includes owning and operating his own business, Kranz Fuel. Um, he was uh, a part-time firefighter, uh, a board of Prosperity One Credit Union since uh, 1971. And he is married to his lovely wife, Olive, has one son, one daughter, and many grandchildren. Please give a warm virtual welcome to our friend, Mayor Gordon Krantz. Thank you. Well, Madam uh, Chair, uh, thanks very much for that uh, introduction. It's much, uh, much appreciated. And just before I get to, uh, to read the, uh, the proclamation, I want to acknowledge to the best of my knowledge, uh, two of my elected colleagues from the town of Melton is joining me, and that's Councillor Samir Ali and Councillor Mike uh, Fluid, not only serves at the local level, but also serves at the regional level as well. And uh, Madam Chair, uh, if I could be so bold uh, to pick up on just a comment that you uh, made on me being the uh, longest serving mayor in the country, and, uh, and I thank you very much for that. But also, I want to acknowledge a very good friend of mine, a person who takes his job very, very serious on protecting people like you and I in the region of Falls. And that's Chief uh, Steve Tanner. Chief Tanner is also recognized just recently as being the longest serving police chief in the country. So, Steve, again, uh, I, I know you're a little bit humble like I am when it comes to those types of things. I know that you and I don't strive for those types of recognition, but it does happen. So, uh, Chief, uh, congratulations on protecting us here in, in Hall. And I do know that the Chief will have an opportunity to say a few words and he can get back at me for that at the appropriate time. But Madam Chair, if I uh, now could read what I think is very, very important for uh, this group, not only this group, Town of Milton, region of Hall, province of Ontario, and this great nation of ours. Read this third day of February, 2022, Mayor's Proclamation, Black History Month. Whereas Black History Month recognizes the contribution of people of African and Caribbean descent that made to Canada shaping its identity. And whereas Black History Month was first recognized in Ontario as of February, 1993, uh, marking the 20th anniversary of the passage of legislation prohibiting the importation of slaves into Upper Canada. And whereas national recognition occurred on December the 14th, 1995, when the House of Commons unanimously agreed to a motion presented by the Honorable G. Augustine to recognize February as Black History Month. And whereas the United Nations proclaimed 2015 to 2024, the decade for people of African descent, an important step in the international community recognizing that people of African descent represent a distinct group where human rights must be promoted and protected. And whereas Black History Month in Canada is very important as it educates Canadians, few Canadians know that the slavery once existed in Canada or that many of the British loyalists who came here after the American Revolution were Black. And whereas Black History Month continues to provide the town of Melbourne with the opportunity to learn, to share, and to celebrate the important contributions and vital role that Canadians of African descent have made to strengthen the social, economic, and cultural mosaic of our community, province, country, and the world. Now, therefore, I, Mary Gordon Krantz of the Town of Milton, do hereby proclaim February 2022 as Black History Month in the Town of Milton and encourage support of this campaign, properly signed and sealed with the seal of the Corporation of the Town of Milton. Hear ye! Hear ye! Again, Madam Chair, if I could be so bold just to elaborate on uh, a very smart, uh, small portion of the uh, proclamation. I personally knew and met and uh, 
chatted with uh, Jean Augustine on more than uh, one occasion. I really personally know the contribution that she made. And as well as not mentioned in this, uh, in this proclamation, but the late Lincoln Alexander as well, and Lincoln Alexander, quite well, and the, uh, the contribution that he made to this uh, nation as well as being the first black person elected to uh, federal uh, parliament. So, Madam Chair, thank you very much, and uh, thanks for having me be part of it. Thank you. Thank you, Your Worship. Thank you so much for the proclamation of Black History Month in town of Oakville. I just want to really say very quickly, I am the timekeeper today, so I'm very watchful of the time. But I, I really want to extend a warm, heartly um, welcome to each and every person present here because you are making history as we speak. And to all our guests and speakers and everyone who's who's um, logged into this um, special occasion. Thank you. Thank you. So looking at the time, thank you, Mayor, um, your worship, um, for keeping to the time. Um, I do know that we'll be raising the flag if we're outside, but it's all good. And we're grateful for um, proclaiming today as um, Black History Month in, in, in the region of um, Milton. I have another guest speaker today on my agenda and i i don't think he really need needs any introduction because um everyone knows um canadians um gold olympic medalist um he is also a politician now but he was canadian um gold olympic medalist and um he is a very dear friend of the acch uh, most importantly a very consistent um community leader in to the residents of Milton. Um, the next speaker is uh, Mr. Adam Van Coverden, who is a member of parliament and also a secretary of um, the Minister of Health and Sports. Uh, Mr. Adam Van Coverden would speak to us for about four minutes and um, we will please welcome him to the virtual stage as um, Mr. Adam Van, Co Van Coverden um, speaks to us about our theme today, which is equity is not e equality. I'm sorry, equality is not equity. So over to you, Mr. Adam. Thank you. Thank you so much, Edosa, and thank you, Adejasola, and thank you, Your Worship, Mayor Krantz. It's nice to be here with everybody. I'm joining you from Ottawa, which is the traditional and unceded territory of the Algonquin people. Uh, it's a, it's been a very busy week in Ottawa, as you can imagine. Um, but yesterday, or sorry, Tuesday, was indeed uh, the, the first day of Black History Month. And we were, we were all glued to our seats yesterday in the House of Commons as my friend and colleague, Greg Fergus, MP Greg Fergus, uh, the Honorable MP Greg Fergus, was recently sworn in as a the, as the member of the Privy Council. Um, delivered one of the most incredible and eloquent, tear-jerking, heart-wrenching addresses that I've ever heard in the House of Commons. At a time where Canada is faced with so many challenges, economic, social, health, across the board, Greg reminded us all that it is consistently the most vulnerable people in Canada and around the world who are impacted by these types of challenges. And that does not just include Canada's incredible black community, uh, but it is a reality for Canada's black community. I want to acknowledge that. I also want to acknowledge the African Caribbean Council of, of, of Halton. And I also want to acknowledge that everybody here is part of more than one social organization whether that's the Canadian Caribbean Association or the Associations of Nigerians and Milton or any other uh, advocacy group. Um, there are a, a number of them. Um, a cesse uh, in nombre de organizations ici à Ottawa et aussi à Halton de créer une plateforme pour les membres de la communauté noire de les pays francophones. Uh, we have to acknowledge that there are 
many countries in the world that speak uh, French, including Canada, but many members of the Canadian Black diaspora come from, from primarily Black um, French-speaking nations. Um, I wanted to elaborate a little bit on what uh, His Worship Mayor Krantz uh, made reference to, because the origin of celebrating and recognizing Black History Month in Canada uh, deserves repeating. It was back in December 1995, really not that long ago when uh, the House of Commons officially recognized February as Black History Month, which followed a motion introduced by the first African Canadian woman ever elected to Parliament, and that is the Honourable Jean Augustine. The House of Commons carried that motion unanimously, and it was it was a pivotal moment in, in Canada's history. Um, my friend Greg Fergus always says that Canadian history is Black history and Black history is Canadian history. Um, and that moment was certainly a pivotal one for, for Canada and for the Black Canadian diaspora. I am also super proud of the fact that uh, back in 2020, when we were able to gather as, uh, you know, as we would like to again very soon, uh, we were able to host Canada's, or sorry, Milton's first proclamation on this issue and subject. Uh, my office was was extremely proud to uh, participate, uh, but following that, we were able to host the Honorable Jean Augustine at the Milton Public Library for a conversation on the relevance, importance, and significance of Black History Month in Canada. And it still gives me a shiver of pride, excitement, and joy. It was the honor of my career, and it was the, in the first three months of my career. So. I want to acknowledge what a significant moment that was for, for Miltonians uh, and, and for the Milton Library, because they're such an amazing organization. They host so many incredible events for, for people. I also want to acknowledge a second uh, moment in, uh, since I'm up in Ottawa, maybe I'm thinking a little bit too Ottawa centric, but that's where I am. But it was back in February, 2008, when Senator Donald Oliver, the first black man appointed to the Senate. And that's correct, 2008. It's only 14 years ago. We've come a long way, Canada, but we still have a lot of work to do. Back in 2008, 14 years ago this month, uh, that Senator Donald Oliver introduced the motion to recognize the contributions of Black Canadians and February as Black History Month, which also received unanimous approval and was adopted on March 4th, 2008. And this adoption of the motion completed Canada's parliamentary position on Black History Month. And that was, you know, I will say, a long time coming. What we have come to realize in Canada is that for all equity deserving communities, groups, and people, equality is not enough. Equity is what's deserved. Equity is worth fighting for. And I refer to that diagram that hopefully we've all seen, uh, which represents three people of various statures and a fence that they would like to watch a game. Um, that that diagram basically demonstrates those those the lived experience of three people at three different uh, points in their lives or at three different uh, points in society um, in, with degrees of access and privilege. Simply putting something to stand on for for you know the shorter person uh, in the diagram is not enough. Um, and then creating a situation where those three people can see over the fence is, uh, is equity in design. But true justice is removing that barrier altogether. There needn't be a barrier to success, to happiness, to health. There needn't be a fence between us and the game that we wish to watch or the fullest life that we wish to live. And we must always recognize that, that fence and that barrier is disproportionately high and continues to exist for black communities in Canada. The work that we must do as community leaders, as elected officials, as trustees, as police chiefs, as young people, as students, as activists, is to tear down those barriers, to remove that fence and to ensure that everybody has access to their best life to their best future, to true equity in design with no barriers between us and true equality. Thank you, everybody.
Super nice to see you on Zoom. I hope that I, I'm coming back from Ottawa tomorrow and I hope I can see everybody uh, sometime soon. Happy Black History Month. If this is a month to celebrate, then I wish you celebration. If this is a month to stand up and protest, then I wish you meaningful protest. If this is a month to get together with family for the first time in too long, then I wish you joy, happiness, and a meaningful month. Thank you. Merci. Miigwech. Awesome. Thank you, Mr. Adam Vancouverden. Thank you so much. Well said. I just wanted to remind each and every one of us of our time um, because um, it's 10.29 and I know we have so many um, panelists that are, are speaking today on such a historic moment. Um, rightly said, I am going to be moving on to the next um, presenter, which will be a video by the Chief of Police, uh, Chief Tanner. And then um, once the video has played, I would uh, briefly introduce the chief of police, even though his wardship has taken out some of the congratulatory message, being the longest serving chief of police of Canada for 40 years. So please, can we just uh, stay comfortable in our seats with your tea or your coffee while we watch um, the video um, presentation by the chief of police, Chief, chief Tanner. Over to you, please. Thank you. So the video is going to be up and running in any moment now. Hello. Thank you for inviting us to participate in your Black History Month event. As we meet today, I am reminded of how lucky we are in Halton to have such a great community that values and embraces diversity. Today and every day, we must continuously celebrate our differences because they truly are our strength. Black History Month is an opportunity for all of us to recognize and honor the enormous contributions that the Black community and individuals have made across all sectors in Canada. It is also an opportunity to heighten our focus on building an inclusive and equitable society where we all have the opportunity to prosper, grow, and ultimately to succeed. The Halton Regional Police Service is grateful to have developed such strong relationships with many organizations and groups across Halton, including yours. This is a privilege that we as a police service do not take lightly, and it is really what today's event is all about. It is about building a community that thrives because people feel safe coming together and forming long-standing and authentic connections. It is also about standing beside our partners to show our support. We are here to support you and are committed on an ongoing basis to reaching our goals together. During the month of February, our police service will be participating in various Black History Month events and celebrations across the region. These events will provide our members the opportunity to learn more about the culture, history, and resilience that makes the Black community here in Halton so very special. As your Chief of Police, my commitment to all of you is that these opportunities do not just occur during the month of February, but that we commit to ongoing learning and professional development for our members now and in the years to come. I recognize that as we continue to strive towards keeping Halton the safest community in all of Canada, our police service must do so with a commitment to put the best interests of those we serve ahead of our own. On behalf of the nearly 1,100 members of our police service, including myself, our two deputies, and the rest of our executive command team, I thank you all for the work you will do to celebrate and honor Black Heritage this month. We look forward to participating in the many Black History Month events that your organization has planned in the coming days and weeks ahead. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Stephen Tanner, for that laudable speech. Um, I know that you're truly committed and dedicated to service. Mm -hmm. um, I read in, in the recent Champion newspaper, your statement, which I quote, we need to address those issues in a very systematic and planned and deliberate way moving forward. And that is exactly what you represent. And we thank you for that laudable speech. Keeping to time, I would ask, um, the next speakers, 
Uh, thank you, Chief um, Tanner. To please keep to your time slot so that we can have everyone speak um, as the time has been allotted. Next on our agenda today, and mind you, the theme for today is equity is equality is not equity. That's that is a theme for our our event for today. So the next um, speaker on our agenda is um, the Vice President of the Canadian Caribbean Council of Halton, which was founded in 1977. Uh, he exemplifies the four pillars of CCAH in promoting education, culture, community, and, and housing. Please join me to, um, to welcome to this virtual stage, Mr. Sheldon Williams. Over Sorry, to you, Mr. I just, Williams. I just need to quickly interject. The chief is still going to make some statement. I apologize, Chief Tanner. I would um, allow you to make your statement um, before Mr. Sheldon comes in. My apologies. Over to you, Chief Tanner, please. No, not at all. And I know I only have a half an hour to speak here, so I will be quick. But uh, first of all, thank you, Mayor Krantz, for uh, your recognition this morning. And uh, it's amazing how we've both spent that many years in public service and we're not getting any older. Uh, I also wanted to thank Adam for your incredible words this morning. Um, protest, certainly, peaceful protest. I'm glad you were even able to get to the Parliament buildings this morning with everything that's going on in Ottawa. But getting back to today, it's a pleasure to join ACCH uh, here today. I was with the Canadian Caribbean Association of Halton uh, last night on their kickoff. And Black History Month will always be important to all of us, uh, but it needs to be so much more than that. Um, we shouldn't need a Black History Month to learn about Black history. I grew up here in Oakville, which was, was instrumental in uh, much of the Underground Railroad and, and that, that terrible history, and I knew nothing about it. Our school system taught me nothing of it. Uh, I went to high school here. I've often said there were two black children in our high school of 1200, Gary and Kathy, and I knew both of them, and I had no sense of what it must have been like for them to be there in that environment as, as such a visible minority. So we need to learn from the richness of our culture and our society, and we're all better because we are diverse. So thank you to all of you for attempting to make the positive differences that you are. Just this morning, I was reading over the Ontario Human Rights uh, Report on policing in Toronto, and I uh, published um, academic document from uh, Dr. Wortley out of the University of Toronto on, on policing in Toronto. And the fact that four or five or six times the number of black people in Toronto are stopped or charged by the police in Toronto over the past seven or eight years. That doesn't mean that some of those things do not or have not happened here, but I know we are very different here in Halton. And I know that you appreciate that as individuals and as an organization. And we saw that during the peaceful protests in each of our communities in Halton after the horrific murder of George Floyd peaceful protests, peaceful people trying to make a positive difference. And we will get there by working together. So thank you very much for your ongoing partnership. Again, we saw it uh, with so many of you and other people, CCAH and others here, to support the, the Black uh, History Police vehicle that we have here in Halton and the recognition of, of Black students and honorariums and the support that we all have for one another. Thank you so much. We can't do it without you and we will be better because of you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Stephen Tanner. And, um... Please go ahead, Sheldon. Okay. Um, first of all, thanks for having me here today and uh, to the Chief. Um, I'm gonna hold you to that playing, uh, <clears throat> playing your trumpet. So I'm gonna find some time to play the trumpet and I can jazz out with you. Um, so good morning and thank you ACCA for having me here. Uh, Black History Month is a very special time of year. It, it, it's the time to reflect on the past and look towards the future. It's the time for our community partners to build a better society for everyone. And we're starting here today. This year, Black History Month is a little bit different. And we have the opportunity to experience a bit of the divisiveness that Black people have faced in their entire lives. You know, COVID-19 pandemic has split us in two teams. Vaccinated, not vaccinated. Maskers and anti-maskers. So just imagine that if a mask can, can cause that kind of animosity, 
something that can be removed. Think about how black people felt not being able to remove their skin color and having that animosity placed on them. This is also a time to reflect on the impact of systematic racism that plagued black people and the long lasting effects of segregation and slavery. Now we've learned a lot about the horrors of the reservation schools and the impact that it had on the lives of the First Nation community. Maybe now we can get a little bit of insight on how black people face when we're being torn from our families and how the ripples of those actions still lead to, to, our, to our troubled waters today. Black History Month is, is more about having a better future. It's about us healing and celebrating with the community. Now I see all the faces on the screen right now. They prove to me that we are on the right track. And once we understand the past, we can get together and we can create the next chapter of Black History you know, as a community together. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Sheldon. And good morning, Your Honor, Your Honorable Justice Barnes. I apologize that we're a little bit um, running um, late. I know you were supposed to speak, but uh, I know that um, everyone here is obviously very, very intentional with respect to our team for today, equality is not equity. So thank you very much, Mr. Sheldon um, Williams um, for your speech, um, really on point. Thank you so much. And thank you for the service and work that you do uh, in the community as well. Next on our item is Mr. The director of um, the, um, the halting Catholic District School Board, Ms. Uh, director Padeli. I just want to point out a quote by uh, the director in, in, in a recent tweet. And his quote is, a single thread of hope is still a very powerful thing. I believe that uh, the director um, would be telling us um, in a very few three minutes um, about the team, equality is not equity. Over to you, Director Pat Daly. Thank you. Thank you and good morning, everybody. And thanks very much for inviting me today. Um, you know, the month of opportunity in our school board offers an opportunity for intentional focus on the rich histories and significant contributions of black Canadians. So it's a time to honor the diverse backgrounds, experiences and cultures as we celebrate the many achievements and contributions of black Canadians past and present. All that being said, our commitment to centering black excellence must extend beyond February. Black history is Canadian history. It should not be a lesson or an exercise that we dust off once a year and then put away at the end of the month. Like other students, black students need to see themselves reflected in the curriculum. They need to be celebrated throughout the year. As educators, we have a responsibility to disrupt and dismantle systemic barriers discriminatory practices and bias in our schools and classrooms that are detrimental to black students. As a school district, we continue to work towards this commitment in a variety of ways, including professional learning, inclusive curriculum and assessment practices, and re-examining our policies and processes to ensure that an equitable and inclusive education is a bit available for all of our students. As a school district, we've worked hard to nurture safe, welcoming, and inclusive schools. And while I believe we have made some progress, our work is certainly not done. We need to be proactive and accountable to all of our families, specifically to our black students, families, and staff by denouncing and dismantling any barriers to success in our classrooms and our communities as we continue to center black excellence every month of every year. As the Director of Education for our board, I look forward to strengthening our partnership with community organizations such as the ACCH to create welcoming, safe, inclusive communities where all of our students, staff, and families share equitably. Thank you very much. Thank you, um, Director Pat Daly. Thank you so much. Um, when we talk about quality and equity, we need to recognize that these two words cannot be sufficiently understood without judicial interpretation. On that note, I would um, call upon um, the Honorable Justice Kofi Barnes 
um, of the Ontario Superior Court of Justice to give us uh, a four minutes um, discuss on our team for today's proclamation. Over to you, Your Honor. Thank you. Thank you very much uh, for the invitation. Black History Month is an opportunity to honor the past and the present contributions of people of African descent to Canadian society. And in so doing, we hope to rewrite the dominant narrative which reinforces negative stereotypes and assumptions that devalue Black people. For me, this is a month that provides an opportunity to learn about Black heritage, to teach others about that her heritage, to teach them about the indispensable contributions to Black people, to our society, um, or Black people to our society and our country. It's an opportunity to remember the ravages of slavery, its lasting impacts on Black peoples and society at large. It is an opportunity to acknowledge the ongoing inequities, inequalities, discrimination in our society. It's an opportunity to do all of this without forgetting the progress those before us have made, at the same time acknowledging that equality and equity are not one and the same, that there remains lots and lots of work to be done by us and our children in the present and in the years to come. Persons of all races have fought to ensure equality, which means that they have fought to ensure that each individual, regardless of their race, is given the same resources and opportunities. However, Black History Month helps us shed light on how the history of slavery and discriminatory practices have placed most Black persons in circumstances that in many instances make it difficult to reach an equal outcome as others. The playing field, ladies and gentlemen, is not level. Black History Month sheds light on the need for equity. That is the need for the recognition that the different, the different circumstance of the Black person is such as to require the allocation of the appropriate resources and opportunities to level the playing field. As a society, we grapple with what this means and how to achieve this. In effect, we grapple with how to achieve equity. The virtues of Black History Month are required all year long. And, and as we go through this process, it, it, it creates and brings a whole lot of conflicting emotions. We are happy. At the same time, we are sad. We are deflated but we are also inspired. We are tired, but we are also rejuvenated. We are discouraged, but we have hope. And we are grateful to those who have gone before us, those who are working now, and those who are currently working tirelessly to ensure that all Black persons uh, can experience true equality, equity, and inclusion. We are inspired by their actions and contributions. We have not yet reached the promised land. We have not. We are nowhere close, but we have left with great hope and promise for a more equal, equitable, and inclusive society. Thank you. Thank you so much, Ion. I know that you had to leave your scheduled court matters to attend. Uh, we thank you so much and for everyone who has spoken. Um, I'm glad that we're talking about the importance of education, which is a learning process. And that will be our next speaker for today, who is a community leader and very instrumental to leading the voice for equitable standards in our, in our education system. That person is no other than Madam um, Therese Aritwa. Please, uh, you have three minutes to talk on our team for today. Over to you, Madam Therese. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Idodi. <clears throat> thank you so much. My name is Marie-Therese Aritwa. And I'm from Rwanda and I'm also Canadian. Uh, thank you so much for inviting me as a community member of Milton. I'm honored to be with you today to celebrate the Black History Month. Uh, when I saw the poster of today's event on social media, I first had a feeling of apprehension and fear, <laughs> knowing that I have to speak alongside several personalities like our mayor of Milton Gordon Krantz, our MP Adam, and it's, all, it's always a pleasure to see them for sure. Uh, I must confess for a second there, I felt a little bit 
intimidated, but I mostly had a feeling of pride, pride to share this platform equally with today's guest. We all appreciate our three minutes and I'm going to do my best. I felt equal because my voice, my words matter on the same level as um, Mr. Padeli and or Mr. Barnes, for instance. <laughs> this feeling of equality uh, is the result of the work of my black ancestors uh, back in Africa and also other leaders such as Martin Luther King, Viola Desmond, other black women who set foot on this beautiful land before, uh, before us, before me, such as uh, the Honorable Jean Augustine, the Honorable Michael Jean, I'm saying this in French. Thanks to their work, I can be today a, a teacher in this country. I can come here and stand by your side and speak. Um, this sense of equality has grown through my personal and professional experiences. I've also learned to appreciate it whenever the opportunity arises. Um, furthermore, that pursuit of equality continues within my, my own community here in Milton, uh, in Houghton Hills, in Ontario. And that's why I congratulate Lady Adiba and ACCH for being able to show that the Black communities must work together equally, regardless of whether you are an Anglophone or Francophone. And on behalf of myself and my Francophone community here in Milton, I want to say thank you. The last two, three years we've been working together together, and we will we'll always continue for sure. As we follow our path, we realize that we might all have access to few things equally. However, we need different resources to achieve our goal, our happiness. For some, it is harder than others. It seems unfair, right? Equality doesn't mean equity. Yeah, and in recent years, this word has appeared in our society at all organization levels. We all have been wondering uh, what makes a situation fair or unfair, just or unjust, equal or not. This feeling of inequity lives in us. Unfortunately, as soon as we arrive in a new country, such as Canada, as an immigrant, and this can be caused by external or internal factors. Personally, moving to Milton 10 years ago, it's been a while now, I had the same equal choices as other buyers. The most important thing was whether I could afford a house or not. Once settled in Milton, I wanted to excel both individually and professionally. It was at that time that I needed more fair fairness towards me and my family. Uh, take the example of my uh, seven-year-old mother. <laughs> when, when she came here, she was able to find a family specialist doctor, but she couldn't find a francophone physician. She doesn't speak English. And this is where we should question ourselves if equity can exist for francophones in Ontario if language keeps being a barrier. We need, we need uh, several resources for sure, Opportuni opportunities to be able to achieve an equal, an equal outcome. Uh, than our English speaking friends. If you are looking for a leadership position, for, ex for example, you are not only competing against your peers, but you also challenges such as the color of your skin, the language, the accent, the culture, the values, etc. Access to French services is a right, as it is to receive equal support from our social system. It is one thing to give the necessary resources, but it is, it is of, of the utmost importance to give the right resources, culturally adapted, so that our community members can achieve these professional opportunities and serve as an example. Equity is a process and equality an outcome of that process, a step in the right direction for our children, the next generation that we hope will benefit from the change that we're all working on right now. I like the quotation of someone called George Washington Carver who said, where there is, an, there is no vision, there is, there is no hope. And I know Lady Adiba, she is a visionary for sure. Uh, and I also have a vision. And I think in our situation, African, Caribbean, French or English speaking communities are culturally diverse and resourceful. resourceful. Many organizations such as the Aquaba Community Nonprofit Organization serve as solidarity by providing tools and resources to promote and advocate for our education, family, children, language, linguistics, cultural achievement, and more. 
I would like also to, to add, I'm almost done, that equity also begin, begins with our schools. And I can testify that there is an awareness, but also concrete action. And I know Ms. Ms. Pradeli and Curtis Ennis can testify too, that there are concrete actions that are implemented in our schools in order to reduce a feeling and reality of inequity that our Black children can meet. However, we still need to do more, of course. I think a better willingness to listen to them and to give them the opportunity to find the solution themselves will, I believe, will allow them to live in a healthy, respectful, and therefore inclusive environment. In conclusion, equality, equality is not equity, but one doesn't prevent the other as we aim for diversity and inclusion. If Black History Month is an opportunity to develop, to create resources, to create opportunities for equity, then I wish us, I wish you all equally a beautiful celebration, a wonderful month of February. God bless you and be safe. Que Dieu vous bénisse. Merci. Thank you, Madame Aritoire. Thank you so much. This is an equal playing field because you just proven that um, with that amazing speech. I want to quickly recognize Councillor uh, Samira Ali as I welcome another great uh, teacher and learner who we all would love to hear. But before we, we call on the director of the Halton School District Board, I really want to plead with everyone that we really pass time. It's 10.55. Um, our presenters, we had three minutes, but we do know how important and critical this topic is to our community and to the roles and the service that we provide to our residents. So I ask for everyone's indulgence that we will be spilling over time, but I know that most of you would um, remain so that we can learn, we can hear, and we can take action. So the next um, speaker for today um, really um, I'm sure we all know him, but all I want to say is a very humble leader who has a career port portfolio and track record as a chief executive officer uh, for education and the secretary of the board. Um, this is no other than um, Director Curtis Ernest, who is going to please give us three minutes um, on our team for today. Equality is not equity. Thank you, Madam Aritoire, and over to you, um, Director Ernest. Please welcome him to the virtual stage. Thank you so much, everybody, and good morning. Uh, I am going to give you back some time. I, I could go on for a while, but I know that you're pressed for time, and I'm just so happy to be here. I want to say Lady Adiba, Mayor Kranz, ACCH, honored guest, it is great to spend some time with you. It is my birthday today. So on my birthday, I usually feel a little bit fearless. Uh, so I am going to just say simply, to all our students in Milton and in the Halton District School Board uh, that you are gifted. And I just wanna speak for two minutes on black giftedness. Nina Simone sang a song where she said, oh, to be young, gifted and black. Oh, what a lovely, precious dream to be young, gifted and black. Open your heart to what I mean. While we continue to work together to create equitable outcomes as a board and as institutions, I want every student of Milton and the Halton District School Board who identifies as black to know that they are gifted and that they have all the attributes of success already in them. I want them to know that we are going to walk alongside them to support them, to realize their full God-given potential. I want them to know that there is nothing they cannot achieve if they put their mind, their heart, their body and their soul towards their goal. There is simply no one or nothing that can stop them. That is what I truly believe and that's what I want every black student to believe. I've always liked this quote, and I wanna leave it with you, that what lies behind you and what lies before you are nothing compared to what lies within you. That's what Ralph Walder Emerson said. And I know that what lies deep within every single black student within Milton and the Halton District School Board is success. And I wanna make sure that we create that playing field, that equitable playing field that's gonna get them there. So thank you this morning and have a great month. Wonderful. Happy, happy birthday. Thank you for sharing your birthday with us. Um, we really appreciate you, um, Director Ernest. And um, just going over to our last presenter and speaker for today, 
this is a community of hope and i'm so so delighted to be a part of this great community and milton as i said uh to me um before and i always say it on our platforms in the various communities that milton is the best place to live in canada this is what i believe i strongly believe it's the best community in canada so this is my view and i will stick to that view because this is what we see in milton every time we come to milton and every time with acch and other organizations call upon our leaders to to come and uh, help us to learn to collaborate and move the dial forward with no further ado i really want to call this very special last speaker for today who is the president of the rotary club of milton if anyone understands grassroots community building, it's no other than President Wale Osimelu, Osim, who would give us three minutes of his wonderful time on our team for today, Black History Month in Milton. Over to you, President Wale, please. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. May your crimes. Other speakers, ladies and gentlemen, I'm very pleased for the opportunity to speak at today's Black History Month event. Equity is not, equality is not equity. Equality and equity are sometimes misconstrued to mean the same thing, using them interchangeably, but they do not and cannot. We should not be talking about equality when we really mean equity, even though they both are aimed at ensuring people enjoy full healthy life by promoting fairness and justice. Equality involves giving everyone the exact the same resources, treating them the same exact way, regardless of need or other individual, other individual differences. While equity involves distributing resources based on the needs of the recipients. While they both promote fairness and justice, it is important for everyone to have a level playing ground, which is what equity is all about. Let's think for a moment about a competition involving runners sprinting around an oval track. The concept of equality would have us treat the runners the same way, ensuring that they all start at exactly the same place on the track. Without deep thoughts, this seems fair. But we know that runners inside in the inside lanes have a distinct advantage over runners in the outside lanes because the distance they have to travel is shorter. As a result, equality starting at the same place doesn't result in fairness. The concept of equity, in contrast, would lead us to stagger the starting positions of the runners in order to compensate for the disadvantages facing those in the outer lanes. In this case, different or tailored treatment is a shorter path to fairness and justice than the same treatment. Without equity, inequality will persist, and those who are most vulnerable will remain, will remain or even become more vulnerable, in contrast to those who are already most fortunate, even becoming so. There are evident inequalities globally in race, gender, sexual orientation, disabilities, education, economic status, and so much more. The lack of equity is at the core of so many global issues, and understanding this is important to achieving overall equity as an outcome. I will not conclude without mentioning who we are as Rotarians. As Rotarians, we practice and abide by a non-partisan, non-sectarian ethical guide called the four-way test by asking the following question of all the things we think, say, or do. Is it the truth? Is it fair to all concerned? Will it be good with and better friendships? Will it be beneficial to, our, to all concerned? This means that we are committed to truth, fairness, goodwill, and friendship in all of our business and personal relationship. The second tenet of the four-way test, is it fair to all concerned, serves as a beacon to Rotarians worldwide. Fairness, as earlier mentioned, is the common goal of equality and equity. They both strive for everyone to have the ability to succeed. However, unlike equality, equity realizes that every person is different and may not have what they need to be truly equal. Caroline Belden says, equality is leaving the door open for anyone who has the means to approach it. Equity is ensuring that there is a pathway to that door for anyone who needs it. The road to equity starts with a focus on both the goals and the barriers or obstacles. Generally, the idea is to identify the disparity and desired outcome or need. Evaluate the specific barriers, then provide solutions that overcome these barriers. Ladies and gentlemen, understanding these differences, which can be kickstarted by adopting the four-way test, will put us in the right step to build a cohesive, safe, confident, prosperous, and happily unified community where everyone is treated with fairness and justice and empowered to participate fully in social, cultural, and economic life, as well as being included in the full benefits of the society. This is the type of community that we all hope for. Thank you very much.
Thank you, um, President Wale, for keeping that very short. Thank you all for joining and staying till this time. Uh, please bear with us. I would like to give the virtual stage to anyone who wants to say something for one minute. Uh, please unmute yourself. This is a very historic and important occasion. We are all community leaders in our respective rights, and we are trying to move the dial um, so that there's an equal level um, for the next generation to come. So if anyone wants to speak for one minute, please feel free to unmute yourself and um, join us in our proclamation and celebration today. And if there's any other questions... I guess, I guess I'll go... Uh, I'm sorry, I was just wondering if there's anybody going to jump in. I just wanted to say uh, thank you very much for the invitation to be here. Uh, I do remember, as Adam mentioned, uh, our first uh, Black History Month celebrations at Town Hall. And we knew that that was the first of many that was going to come. And uh, we've had to deal with COVID this way. And, and I'm really looking forward to uh, the next time, uh, touch wood, that we can all get together and, and be in person and celebrate this. And, and to hear the, uh, the, the wonderful speakers here today has been so inspiring. And I've learned a lot uh, through this process. And, and, and I think that's what this is all about. It's about learning. It's about expanding and uh, I feel so happy that my, my, my daughter who comes home from school brings home some new information uh, that she learns about Black History Month during this time as well. So the better children learning and, uh, and, and, and talking about that difference between equality and equity and, and let's, uh, let's keep all me moving forward. I just wanted to say thank you again for, for allowing me to be here and for everybody's speeches here today. Thank you very much and happy Black History Month. Thank you again, Mike. Thank you so much for joining. Thank you for being involved. It shows your commitment and the great community that we have in Milton. I'm so, so proud to belong to this community. I'm yeah. going to allow one person who wants to say anything for one minute. Um, this is a, an equal platform. Please unmute yourself and speak for one minute um, before I move to the next item on our agenda. We're almost at the end of our celebration today. Um, is it okay for me to go? Please. Thank you, Emmanuel. Um, I just want to thank everyone for taking time out of the day to join us in solidarity. I see a lot of um, mm -hmm. bu busy people and people in high stations coming in for today's event. So from the bottom of my heart, thank you for joining us and taking time out of your day to celebrate with us Milton's Black History Month. Thank you, Mr. Emmanuel. There's a lot of work to be done and I would not uh, take too much of your time. Um, I just want to announce that this is the first proclamation in Halton. Uh, we have the next proclamation of Black History Month by ACCH um, at the city of Burlington on February 10th. And then we have for the city of Oakville on February 18th. And then finally, we have the proclamation for the city of Halton Hills on February 24th. Stay tuned and please um, join us, invite your friends, invite stakeholders, and then we'll be sending out a newsletter. Uh, I, would, I definitely would like um, Councillor Samira Ali to say something before I pass the, um, the um, stage to our um, board director, uh, Mr. Abi Salami. So over to you, uh, Councillor Ali. Thank you so much and good morning to everybody. What an honor and a privilege to be included in this amazing event. Thank you for the leadership. I want to highlight the leadership of Idosa and Lady Abba in gathering us all together today. And a lot has been said about equality and equity. And I think for me, it just boils down to the fact that we need to be cognizant of each other's challenges and to recognize what we face and to say what needs to be said at the right time and not looking the other way. I feel like we need to introspect wherever we are working in whatever organization we are. Are we just tokenizing people around us or are we actually taking meaningful action where change comes? Because I have heard a lot today, but I want to tell you the young people are watching us and it is up, uh, incumbent upon us to not only to open the doors for them, but to also leave the door open for them so that whatever struggles we have faced are at least a degree less for our future generations. And I know I just have one minute. I have a lot to say. I'm really passionate about this. 
but I also want to thank and highlight the role of women in this movement and I want to salute them and I just want to say I am so inspired. Thank you. I know you have a lot to say, Councillor Ali. Thank you so much for joining us. Regional Councillor Mike, we thank you, the directors of uh, our school boards. Our education is people talk to really changing and really dealing with the equal field that we all want to see. So um, on that note, I will call upon our esteemed board director, Mr. Abi Salami, to give a closing remarks and vote of thanks. I want to really thank everyone for staying um, to this time. I know, um, you know, time is precious, especially in these times, but this is what we have to do. This is a commitment that we're ready to take. So once again, good morning. Have a fantastic, lovely Thursday. Over to you, Mr. Abi Salami. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And I hope and believe everyone enjoyed and learned from this special event today. Thank you all for being so wonderful, for being who you are and what you represent. Our society would always get better if we continue on this genuine collaboration. Let's all enjoy the benefit of togetherness, inclusion, equality, equity, joy, and happiness. Thank you all for your contribution. May your God and Kranz, uh, MP Adam Van Coverden, Chief Steve Tanner, Mr. Sheldon Williams, Director Pat Daly, Honorable Justice Covey Barnes, Madam Mary Teresa Witor, Director Curtis Ennis, Happy Birthday, Mr. Wally Osami Louis, um, Regional Councillor Mike Cloyd, and Councillor Samira Ali, and host of all other participants. We thank you very much. Canadian history is Black history. Black history is Canadian history. Thank you all for making this day a memorable one. By the way, Black History Month shouldn't be celebrated only in a month. It should be a continuous process for us all. I'll leave this with us. You can't change how people treat you or what they say about you. All you can do is change how you react to it. Thank you all for the positive reaction. And always remember that Equality is not equity. Thank you all. Thank you. Thank you. Have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mr. Abi Salami. We're going to have some music on the background, but before we leave, I would kindly ask you to please turn on your cameras. We want, we want to um, document and, of course, um, celebrate today by taking a virtual picture. If we're in person, we all have the camera and all the... Um, hype about the occasion. So please um, smile and um, it's a lovely day and just um, we'll have uh, the digital team take the the picture. Over to you, the digital team. Done? Thank you. Thank you. Once again, thank you all for joining ACCH. I wish you a very safe and a happy rest of the week. And I look forward to seeing everyone next week for the proclamation of Black History Month in the town of Berlin, um, town of Burlington on February 10th. Have a wonderful day. Over to you, Mr. B. Praise. Thank you guys, have a great day.
Thank <laughs> you. 